Good evening, folks. In today's episode, I would like to talk about myocarditis. That is basically the inflammation of the heart. Okay, there is so much speculation that COVID virus, the spike protein of this virus may bind to heart cells and then they create cellular injury and T lymphocyte mediated cytotoxicity and they produce a cytokine storm. This process activates more T cells and uh, T cell activation and cytokines are released and that causes damage to the heart muscle. So myocardial injury can be caused by many viruses or even by immune response. So the currently accepted definition of myocarditis is biopsy dependent and includes the observation of 14 or more lymphocytes per MCL, including up to four monocytes per MCL with the presence of seven or more CD3 positive T lymphocytes per MCL. And that injury can be fulminant, subclinical or chronic. The second phase results in viral clearance and is accomplished by activation of T and B cells and antibody production. Associated cytokines help contain the injury but may actually worsen it by attracting inflammatory cells. In severe myocarditis, soluble fast ligand and interleukin may be expressed. Both the cellular and the humoral inflammatory processes contribute to the progression to chronic injury. And there are subgroups that appear to benefit from immunosuppression. Genes also play a role. Genetic predisposition is a likely factor in at least a few cases. Autoimmune myocarditis, like giant cell myocarditis, may occur with no identifiable viral infection. So people with the genetic predisposition are at higher risk to develop heart damage and heart inflammation after COVID infection. We need to understand that. What about vaccines? So myocarditis or heart inflammation following COVID infection or vaccination have been reported uh, in recent years. Now, anger male patient seem to be at highest risk for this overall rare event. With the vaccination, if you look at CDC reports, 13.3 myocarditis cases per 100,000 recipients of the Moderna vaccine and 2.7 cases per 100,000 recipients of the Pfizer vaccine, while the natural COVID infection, a rate of 150 cases of myocarditis per 100,000 people has been described. So vaccines, yes, of course, vaccines cause heart inflammation. But remember, even natural infection causes heart inflammation at a higher rate. With COVID-19, myocarditis appears to affect ethnic groups disproportionately with the death rates highest among black persons, likely due to both an increase in comorbidities and healthcare disparities. In Germany, they studied 100 patients who had recovered from COVID-19, and they took cardiac MRI scans, and these scans revealed some degree of abnormality in 78 patients, with inflammation noted in 60, independent of severity of the illness. Patients with fulminant myocarditis may present with acute cardiogenic shock. So many people develop cardiogenic shock, all right? And that can cause sudden death, even in uh, young adults, younger than 35 years. The ventricles are usually not dilated, but thickened. They get thickened and there is a high death rate. Now some people say, some people recovered very well after this cardiogenic shock. But remember, everything depends on the kind of treatment 
these people get in the right time. If you delay, then the consequences will be severe, even fatal. And those people who have the chronic disease, okay, some people develop chronic heart disease. They tend to have only mild dilation of the left ventricle and eventually present with a more restrictive cardiomyopathy. When you treat them, for example, you need to see, uh, you need to get an echocardiogram and uh, left ventricle ejection fraction plays a role. If it is less than 40%, start with ACE inhibitors and beta, beta blockers. Colchicine has been suggested if pericarditis predominates. These patients develop arrhythmias, that means irregular beats. And those irregular arrhythmias also should be suppressed. And COVID-related myocarditis, the general treatment is supportive. Therapies like remdesivir, glucocorticoids, interleukin-6 inhibitors, intravenous immunoglobulin, and colchicine. Only corticosteroids appear to have any favorable effect on outcomes. The data are still incomplete. So we are seeing more and more literature coming out, but the clear picture will definitely come out in the next few years. Exercise should be limited during the recovery phase and some people believe digoxin should be avoided and it likely has little value in this setting anyway. So controlled trials of immunosuppressive therapy with corticosteroids and intravenous immunoglobulins have not suggested a benefit, though some recommend intravenous immunoglobulins in some cases. So there is so much uncertainty here. Intravenous semiloglobulin or corticosteroids or remdesivir. So a clear picture is not there. Antiviral medications like uh, uh, Placonaril for enteroviruses has been tried empirically and studies are lacking as to when to discontinue, discontinue the chosen therapy if the patient improves. Patients with fulminant myocarditis require aggressive short-term support, including an LV assist device. If severe pulmonary infiltrates accompany the fulminant myocarditis, you need ECMO mission, that is extracorporeal membrane oxygenation support, may be temporarily required and has had notable success. Live virus vaccination should be delayed at least 11 months for children who receive intravenous immunoglobulins. Now what about uh, uh, students or young, young people who get uh, heart inflammation after COVID and how to go back to sports? That's an interesting question. So if you get COVID and any symptoms suggestive of heart inflammation, okay, always get an echocardiogram. An echocardiogram shows us how the valves are working, how the chambers are filling, whether there is any cardiomyopathy, whether these chambers dilated, whether there is restriction to the blood flow, all those things you will see very well on an echocardiogram. So get an echocardiogram, get uh, uh, the enzymes, like troponin to see whether heart muscle got damaged and then get a 24 hour EKG monitoring. So see whether there is any irregular beats and uh, if they are symptomatic, then definitely you should not return to the sports. So you can return to sports if the echocardiogram is good if the EKG is good, if the hot uh, inflammatory enzymes like uh, troponin, they, it returned back to the baseline. Then you can go back to sports. But if your echocardiogram is uh, showing restrictive cardiomyopathy or dilated cardiomyopathy, or if your hot inflammatory enzymes are very, very high, or if your EKG is showing some uh, arrhythmia, 
then do not go back to sports okay and in fact that is true for everybody um so those are my thoughts on uh, covid related heart inflammation thank you so much please uh, post your comments visit our website www.drpal.org and i will see you in the next episode